Are you starting a smart home? Maybe looking for some automation ideas? Here are five of my favorite easy smart home automations that I use daily. I'm going to go through these, give you a couple examples of each. I'm also going to show you how they're written with Apple's HomeKit and Alexa routines. Number one is two automations that use motion sensors. The first is an automation that uses a motion sensor that's on my ceiling above the stairs. When you walk down between the hours of 4.30 a.m. and 7.30 a.m., it turns on the living room lights to a nice glow in there that's not too bright and turns on the kitchen lights. For those of you who are new to automations, I'll show you on this first one how to write this automation for Alexa Routines and for Apple's HomeKit. For the rest of them, I'll just walk through the automations and talk about the steps. I'm not going to write each one because that would take quite a while. Now to do this with an Alexa Routine, you would open up the Alexa app, go to Routines, hit the plus sign, you would then enter a routine name. We call it morning motion, hit next. Then we choose when this happens. And here are the different triggers you can use to trigger a routine. What we're gonna do right now is choose smart home. We'll pick our smart device. You could choose not detected or detected. We want detected, hit next. And from here, you would choose your actions. But before that, we can change when it happens. We want it between 4.30 and 7.30 and we'll hit next and what we want to do is add our actions so we hit plus and for actions here's your list of things you can trigger from a routine for now we are just doing smart home we want to control a group so we will turn the living room lights on next power on next we'll add another one smart home Control a group, kitchen, lights, next, power, on, next. And then we save it. That's it. Now when we walk down, it turns on those lights. The other motion sensor automation I use is here in the office. Between the hours of 4.30 p.m. and midnight, when I would want light in here, there's a motion sensor that turns on the office lighting. The way that's set up, if you go into HomeKit, under the home app i have automations and then you hit the plus sign and here you would choose add an automation under automations you have people arrive leave a time of day when another accessory is controlled a sensor detects something and then there's some ones that it'll suggest for you we want a sensor detect something we're going to choose this motion sensor next we want detects motion next and then we're going to pick our scene or our individual accessories. In this case, I have a scene called Office Lights On. Next, and here you can give it a name. Right now it'll default to motion detected in the house. Now with this, to get it to turn off after a certain period of time, you could, turn, you could select Turn Off. And in my case, I have it set for 30 minutes. It's great to have lighting just when you need it. Number two easy automation it opens and closes my curtains depending on the time of day. I'm using the SwitchBot curtains with some existing ones that I already have. I love it. It makes me smile to see my curtains open in the morning or if I hear them closing at night. I think it's like, who has automated curtains? I do. You can. It's, they're really easy to use. We'll talk about them more in a minute. Now, the first automation I have happens in the morning. Uh, I'll show you with the Alexa routines. What ends up happening is that my curtains open 30 minutes after sunrise. And what's cool is with something like this, you can actually choose sunrise or sunset and offset it to pick exactly when you want it to trigger. And then from there, what it does is it takes my curtains, which I grabbed under smart home devices, and I have two choices. I can either do open or I can choose close. So for this one, I have open there since it's the morning routine and that's it. And here it is, this is what it does. 30 minutes after sunset, the curtains close automatically. Now to do this with Apple's HomeKit, you have to do it a little differently. You can't do it within the Home app. You have to create a personal automation that triggers a shortcut. And the reason you have to do it this way is that the SwitchBot products don't work with HomeKit yet. They work uh, with Siri though. Here's some examples of some shortcuts. So I have my curtain open and my curtain closed. If you hit the plus sign, you would create a personal automation 
and this personal automation would trigger a shortcut instead of uh, creating a normal home automation. So what I have here is a personal automation that 30 minutes after sunset, it runs a shortcut and that shortcut is the closed curtain shortcut. If I wanted to, I can add other things in here. If I wanna trigger scenes with other devices or even turn on my TV, there really is a lot of choices, but we're keeping it simple because that's the point in this video. That curtain automation is made possible by today's sponsor, SwitchBot and the SwitchBot Curtains Rod 2. I've been using this SwitchBot curtains for the last year. I love them, it's super cool. What you do is you basically hide this on the backside of your curtains so you don't see it. It is a motor that pushes and pulls your curtains open and close. It's simple to use. It takes the curtains you already have and automates them. So you don't have to go buy some expensive custom blinds. This is the updated Rod 2 version. Instead of having to set the tension yourself, it does it right to what you need. They also have it available in U-Rail and I-Rail versions. I do like SwitchBot. I love that they make unique products that help take the items you already own and make them smart. Check out their link in the description. You can also use my promo code to save some money. Uh, go check them out. They really are making some great stuff over there. Number three is shutdown automations. I have two of them that I use. I have one in the morning that after my daughters go to school, what it does is it shuts down lights that could easily get left on. So at 8 a.m., it turns off my living room lights, turns off the stair lights, the kitchen lights, and the hall lights. The way I have this written is if you go into the Alexa routines, the name of it is my morning shutdown. At 8 a.m., that is the trigger, a time trigger, it will take the downstairs hall lights, turn them off, stair lights off, living room lights off, and kitchen lights off. That's it, nice and easy. I also have a nighttime shutdown automation that at 11 p.m. at night, it turns off all the lights downstairs, the kitchen, the hallway, and the living room lights. Definitely a good reminder it's time to go to bed. Uh, the way this is set up in HomeKit is that I created an automation. That automation is based on time, so 11 p.m. Uh, daily. And then what it does is it triggers a scene and an accessory. Now, if I wanna see what's in that scene, I can actually hit good night, hold, do a long press, and here are the items within that scene. So if I wanted to add something in there, I can do it from this point. Number four is using door sensors with LED strips in pantries and closets. It really comes in handy in places that you don't have good lighting. For example, uh, we have a pantry that has no light inside. Uh, so I ended up putting some old LED strips in there and uh, a door sensor. When you open it up, light comes on. You close it, light goes off. To see how it was written in routines, here it is the pantry open routine. What happens is when the door sensor is open, it will take my TV strip, because I didn't relabel really a pantry yet, because it's my old TV strip, and it will power it on. You're gonna need a second routine to power it off. I have the pantry closed, but let me show you what I did in Apple's HomeKit. Again, I have a pantry open and a pantry closed. For the automation, it's called pantry close. Uh, what it does is when the office uh, contact sensor closes, it will take the pantry strip and turn it off. It's a simple addition adding the strips and the door sensor that makes a huge difference. In here, I have a SwitchBot door sensor that when I open up the closet, it will turn the lights on. And if for some reason I leave it open for an extended period, it will automatically turn them off. Even though it automatically turns itself off after a certain amount of time, I still made a second automation so that when you close the closet, it turns it off immediately. Number five is using smart buttons to turn on or off lights. Physical buttons are still great in a smart home. Voice is not always better. Old school touch for the wind, baby. I love it. I may use motion, door sensors, and time to trigger lighting, but having that button to turn it off is still very convenient. Like in here, I single press on that button over there will turn off the lights in here. Double press will turn on just my office hangout lighting, and then a long press turns on what you see. 
very easy. Typically, I only use that for a single press to turn off lights in the room because I use automations to turn it on for me automatically. Now, the way you do this in HomeKit with supported buttons is a little different. You don't actually write an automation. You go to the button. So here's my office flick button. I long press on it and I see there's a single press, which is my office off a double press, which is lights on, and then long press, which takes me to my blue video. Now my garage, a single press turns the lights off, a double press takes it to the relaxing hangout state, and a long press brings up the overhead lights for more lighting in there. Now to write those within the Alexa app, you write them like you would a normal routine. Now to trigger each of those three routines, you would go under Smart Home, and you'll see the flick button right here has three choices to it. There is a click, double click, and hold for a long press. So for this one, it's the garage flick, single click, powers off all the lights in there. Then I would make one for double press and one for long press. Now, if you go buy smart buttons, make sure that it works with Alexa, uh, the ones from Flick do. Now, what is a simple routine or automation that you use? Let us know in the comment section. Next, make sure to check out this video over here. I go over the pros and cons of both the Echo and the HomePod. Maybe you're thinking about switching or you found this video and you haven't found an assistant yet that could help you, uh, but I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching. Bye.